D-N-T show is intended for mature audiences. Parental discussion is advice. Live long and prosper, bitches. Shall we just start right off the bat with a um, Las Vegas update? Are, is, are we still talking Vegas, right? Uh, we are. are we oh, Vegas? yes. You're coming to Vegas, right? Star Trek Las Vegas may take place every August, but on this show. This is where we hang out the rest of the year. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the crew has been fatigued now from so many months in space, and they need to take a break. The landing party has been down to check out the terrain while the crew Jolan True Bitches, this is Gettysburg 7 with another supplemental law coming to you from the floor of Star Trek Las Vegas 15. That would be 2015 for those playing at home. With me is my co host in her cardigan sweater, Terry Lynn. Good morning, everyone. And we are very happy to have with us my crush, the beautiful Jarrah Hodge. Hello. Good morning, Tara. How are you? I'm excellent. Um, I'm also a fan of the Picardigan sweater, so um, I'm very reassured to see we are, we are all of great taste today. I'm in the scan, people. That's why Bitch is Fabulous is back. <laughs> it's actually quite frightening. Well, I'm a little upset because if you look, the iron in the hotel left us, like... Did it scorch a little? No, but, like, dirt, you know how the irons get? Uh, yes. and, and I was like, man! <laughs> 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 but, okay, back to the... Back to Jer- We're here to talk to Jara because she's an insanely brilliant Canadian, so, you know, two great things there, and has a fantastic podcast with a different point of view. Yeah, I'm one of the four hosts of the Women at Work podcast, the only Canadian host, although we are all insanely brilliant, I believe. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we are um, we just started in March, and we basically were listening to podcasts, and we're like, there's there's a few women hosts who are fabulous, Thank you. Um, Thank you. but uh, we, we thought that there was more to be said uh, from women's perspectives, uh, particularly about the women in Star Trek. And I'm sure that I can. Tell, I think all. I think that all three of us can agree that, uh, with with the except with certain exceptions that really started to come around in DS9, the women in Star Trek were relegated to this, the typical stereotypical roles, mm-hmm. and it wasn't until. Um, maybe Crusher, as a as a physician, was coming but you out. have your problems with I, Crusher. I have my problems with Crusher. I have my problems she says with Crusher. Is this kind of mom? <laughs> no, she was. Wesley, come here. Let me get that dirt off your cheek. <laughs> um, but it, it, I would say things started to take a turn for the better in DS9. Do you agree? Yeah, I definitely Pure. agree. Pure. But I think part of the problem was also it wasn't just that the women were in those nurturing roles, but that I don't think the creators took those roles seriously because I think like being a mental health professional is a really important job, and right. I don't think that we ever got to see that with Troy. It was not like the writers and the creators didn't consider that an important I job. I couldn't agree more. Well, yeah. I'm, Going back to TMG with Tasha, she was always emotional and overreacting. Right. Almost like a guy said, this is how a woman would react in a crisis. Well, that, I think, well... I just think she was kind of all over the place. I don't think we got to really know her as a character, yeah, yeah. Um, except for the fact that she was, like, raised in this horrible circumstance. I think even, like, the single episode with Ishari are, later on, we get to know more about Ishari than we ever got to know about Tasha. Agreed. Totally agreed. Totally agree. That's her hot sister. Yes. <laughs> yeah, great great hair. Yeah, great yeah. Really cute hair. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so, Very 80s, that hair. Yeah. So, now, tell us about your site. Tell us about the podcast. Tell us about your co-hosts. Sure. So, um, the the co-hosts are um, Andy, who is in Chicago, and she um, is her Twitter handle is First Time Trek because she is watching Star Trek for the first time. I love, I love her, her so yeah. much. She is awesome and hilarious, and um, so it's cool because um, she really provides a fresh perspective. The rest of us are like longtime fans who have spent a lot of time, you know, watching all the series and yeah. reading all the books and you know so, researching the behind the scenes. Right. So, in other words, it, you guys are the over analysts, and yes. she's the new analyst. <laughs> yeah, like, she, she definitely um, brings an analytical perspective to it, but she's seeing things for the first time, and I think that's really... And that, that's cool, because I think there are a lot of new fans coming in still all the time, especially since the reboot movies, um, so it's cool to get that perspective. What What's the thing that she's seen so far that has surprised you the most that 
through your multiple viewings, you never, or or that you never consider. Mm. Yeah. Because I know she stumped me a couple of times with her tweets. And when yeah. I follow her when she's watching a new episode, I, I, her perspective is kind of like, well, I never really saw well, it that I way. Yeah. Or, if you follow her, it's so funny because she'll be like, oh, it's going to be that kind of episode. Yeah, well, I, I know that she just got introduced to Vedek Wynn for the first time because she's in season one of Big Face uh, Nine. And she was like, this woman, she's like a really nice grandma who's also super creepy. And um, it's... Kudos to Louise Fletcher yeah. for one of the great villains of all time. It's, um, it's really fun to... To watch her like not know where that stuff is gonna go and you're kind of like it, she, you know some people are jerks and spoil it for her but yeah, um we're, we try not to um so yeah so andy's great and then we have uh, grace who used to co-host the all things track podcast who's in seattle um I love her she put up with orange if alone. anybody yeah. could put up with orange yes. we love you orange you're she just man, orange. wrote a uh, so we were reading that in the star trek novels pal the ferengi from rules of acquisition is now like a ferengi romance novel editor so <laughs> grace took it upon herself to write like a teaser for a ferengi bodice ripper called a price beyond latinum uh, so that's tacked onto the end of one of our shows if you listen all the way through um it involves, like marvel it's got some george michael in the background it's pretty amazing <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then we have Sue, who uh, is one of the hosts of the Anomaly podcast out of New York, um, and uh, she's a huge TNG fan and uh, a, like hardcore Picard pressure shipper. Um, so, it's, uh, <laughs> see, and she's here's the anti Terry. So, yeah, yeah, she is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if anybody says yeah. that somehow women who happen to be feminists yeah. all agree, there is totally. proof yeah. that we don't. Yeah, we had a quite a, a lively debate on whether. We or not we were bothered by conundrum and the Riker row sleeping together or not and uh, we definitely have some disagreements <laughs> well I, I will excuse that one because of the circumstances they were in I'm also just like they're all adults and they all knew the well, circumstance they were in so they weren't like brainwashed or cold I mean they were brainwashed but they knew they knew that they might not be in these relationships in real life right and I always thought it was interesting for that one because of the Riker row mm -hmm. loggerheads yeah. and constantly butting heads that somewhere you know how they say when you're that opposite there's going to be some some sparks that fly and plus it gave us a chance to see Will Riker, Riker totally uh, thrown off his yes. off balance. Off balance. And, oh, the end scene in that yes. is so great. <laughs> also in the, the first scene, Troy beats Data at chess. So I the notable Troy scene, I think. Oh, I forgot all about <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. She, she the, sort of the message is that um, you need intuition as well as logic. Right. And if that was really Marina, she would have picked up the chess pieces, thrown them down, done a dance, yeah. and been like, in your face! <laughs> <laughs> well, that much is true. That yes, much is true. definitely. So uh, you started in March. How is things going? Great. Um, so we're, um, I'm just working on the 13th episode right now, which is on uh, just season one of Deep Six Nine, like what were the impre first impressions of the main characters, um, but we've uh, we've done things. We've looked at the what we call the Ferengi feminist revolution, like the evolution from uh, the beginning of TNG through Deep Space Nine. Ruined how... the culture. They ruined the culture. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cork would agree with you. Cork, you can have a club with Cork and Brunt. Um, FCA. <laughs> <laughs> um, we talked about we talked about Romulan women um, and the Romulan uh, commander yeah. in the one where Troy. Um, uh, Oh, Face of the Enemy. Face yeah. of the Enemy. Yeah. I love her. Yeah. The, the so one good. episode where I started to like Troy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's her best episode, I think. Yeah. Um, By far. Yeah. By and far. it's it's such a great episode, too, just because, yeah. like, it's really these two uh, tough women, and they have their own motivations, and Tereth, yeah, Carolyn Seymour's Tereth is so great. And I thought that that episode, as a Romulan, yeah. did so much to flesh out in mm -hmm. one episode the Romulan culture and that look we're not all some of us yeah. are serving for the the honor of serving mm -hmm. the empire it's really when you realize that the Tal Shiar is more of an influence they're the mm -hmm. secret police yeah. and how they terrify their own people yeah. yeah and I was it I think it really set up a great and DS9 picked up on that view. I agree yeah I agree. think it worked a lot better than the Steel episodes honestly uh, well, now I have to ask you <laughs> yeah were you bothered that they brought Esri in um, at 
the time I was because I really loved Jadzia. And, um, I mean, of course, the way that she was killed off was awful. Um, and I think Esri suffered from some of the same problems as Troy, where she was a counselor, but then Vic was doing all the counseling, kind of like yes. Guinan was doing all the counseling on TNG. So um, other than her, she helps Garrick and Nog a little bit, but Vic's really the one who helps Nog. She gave Garrick one of his greatest scenes yeah. ever. Now get out of here before I say something unkind. Yeah. Um, I th- like, I think Nicole DeBoer did her best in a tough situation. Um, and I, I know at the time I was kind of disappointed that I felt like this new character was taking over in such a tense time in the series. Yeah. Um, they did what they, they could do. I think she had some good moments, but I, I'm a Jitsia fan at heart. Well, I myself would have seen, I, 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 I'm with you. I would have liked to have seen Esri come in as something other than a counselor. Yeah. Um, maybe even in a, um, it, maybe even something in a more of a command role as opposed mm-hmm. to a subordinate that would have been cool. Um, and, and to see that kind of tension that I would have liked yeah. to have seen much more tension between her and Wolf, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. I thought it would have been fun. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think you're right. She I'm also, really I also don't like her ending up with Bashir because I feel like it was... Oh, that was thrown together, wasn't it? Yeah, but I also... I feel like it was like Bashir wanted Jadzia, but she was like too together and competent for him. And so he ended up with like the insecure... On the insecure is how yeah. some people look at it. Yeah, I don't think he preyed on no, it. No, that's how some I people look at it. Though. Yeah, I think that that she, I don't know, I think doesn't speak well of her character. Like, if I had seen what how he had behaved towards Z that whole time, I would have been like, Ugh. now reading the novels. <laughs> have you read any of the novels? Yeah, I know they break up. Okay, well, <laughs> you know what happens yeah. with Jadzia? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. no, I mean, with Jadzia. Yeah, I really She's like her as a captain. captain. Yeah, she really is. I was a little nervous because mm-hmm. I thought, how are they going to take this timid, yeah. you know, kind of weak. And mm-hmm. introduced her in Destiny and as the well. captain so out of good. nowhere. It, yeah. yeah. And, but. Yeah. And they have her as, she's in a similar situation where she's been kind of thrust into being the captain because all these people have died. So it's similar to how she's introduced on in yeah. Nine, but there's not that same her floundering like she is. Right. Um, she and just, she's has doubts, but she keeps them to herself and, and she does her job. Was it, was it John Jackson Miller's takedown where she stood toe to toe with Picard? Oh, that's so great. Um, I guess in the Destiny trilogy it's, where she's... Um, there's a more recent oh, one. Oh, okay. I think it's Takedown by John Jackson. I think it is. Oh, okay. I haven't read well, that one well, yet. So she's, well, she's in command of the Aventine. In, of yeah, the Aventine. And, and, and Riker is the one... He's the admiral, right? Mm-hmm. Who comes yeah. in and kind of takes control over her ship. Mm-hmm. And then it's tense between all yeah. three of them. And Picard is there. Yeah. But she stands toe-to-toe with Picard. Awesome. And it's a great... Yeah. It, it, I love what they've done with her in the I really yeah, do. I really I agree. do, too. I think a lot of times with, um, especially the, like, women feminist fans, a lot of times we say, like, if only this had happened, and then someone goes, it happened in the novels. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's good. I really appreciate the novel universe for what they've done for a lot of the characters. Like, to bring Ro back was great, and uh, yes. the, I mean, even Troy in the Titan novels actually getting to, like, kick ass as a diplomat. Yeah, there's, yeah. I agree, I agree, I agree. Yeah. agree. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm also a big fan of what they do with the women characters in Star Trek Online. Mm-hmm. I think it's yep. nice to see that they're treated as equals. They're mm-hmm. not necessarily, I mean, you get to choose which your character wears, yeah. and yes, and inevitably somebody's going to have the open top, you know, yeah. whatever for their female characters. But at least in the game, yeah. they're, um, they're not the ro- in mini um, skirts. They're not mm-hmm. in the things that they are considered women of command. And what's your name? The Romulan? Sila. No, no, no. no. Like the other, yeah, the, yeah. The captain of the, uh... Yeah, yes. and then you've got the, the captain of the Bortos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. mean, the two flagships for the two mm-hmm. other factions yeah. are actually women, which it's, is fantastic. Yeah, it does feel like the crews are a lot more, uh, act, like, fairly divided than on the actual shows. Yeah. Right. Um, My main character, Satan. Mm-hmm. You know how, like, when you get your, mm-hmm. your bridge officers, yeah. okay, I need a science. Yeah. Well... My science was a female. Mm-hmm. Then, okay, I need an engineer. Mm-hmm. The other two were males. My engineers, yeah. my bridge crew is all female. Yeah. Because of the way, I will never give up my first officer, Rishi. Oh. And Dorian. <laughs> we, were, we, were, <laughs> we were talking about, we're talking about the new Admiralty things. In there. Yeah. So, um, about 
uh, tell people about it, it's not you don't just talk about you know super feminist issues mm-hmm. I mean you talk yeah. about everything but just from your perspective right yeah for sure because I mean women have been super active in the Star Trek fandom since its inception I mean right. the first conventions the uh, campaign to save Star Trek like women fans were really integral in all of that and um, so it's just making sure that there's a diversity of perspectives being heard so we talk about all kinds of things like I was saying about the first impressions of the characters like we talk about our first impressions of Odo and Quark and stuff and it's not all just like they're men <laughs> right <laughs> like, <They suck. laughs> yeah like we, we're all um, we have like different characters we all love and uh, it's uh, but sometimes we just look at things differently um, yeah now how can people uh, listen to your show or, and read your blogs everything on your site where sure um, so our website is womenatwork.com and from there you can find the links to us on iTunes Stitcher TuneIn SoundCloud all the different platforms pretty much every place you can find GNT show you can find Women at Warp yep. that was very professional we're, yep we're also on Facebook at Women at Warp and Twitter at Women at Warp so you can find us pretty much everywhere at Women at Warp <laughs> and if you're listening to this those links will be provided in the show notes underneath this uh, uh, recording so awesome. uh, click on one of those links follow it over and you can listen to Jarrah thanks and gang. Uh, thanks for joining us Jarrah it was a pleasure was having you yep uh, no that's great thank you so much for the interview awesome yeah and until next time, live long and prosper. Uh, there's coffee in that nebula. That works. <laughs> and I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go crush on Jara now. Chill on true bitches. <laughs> Music for the G and T show is provided by Warp Eleven, Andrew Allen. Grethor and Five Year Mission. This has been a Busy Little Beaver production. Some dude walks out, proceeds to explain what it's all about. Come true, cause